Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome once again to God's Word. Hallelujah. We are, uh, uh, God is teaching us from the Word of God in the book of uh, Psalm 68, verse 20. It says, God is to us a God of acts of salvation, and to God the Lord belongs, escapes from death. That is a key word. And he is talking about the last word that we read in, uh, was from the book of Isaiah, the last episode. Chapter 45, verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. We also read from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7. It says, seek and you shall find, ask and it will be opened. Knock and it sh ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Again, we read from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 13, sorry, 29, verses 11 to 14. See, in all these verses you find, God is waiting for you to ask, to seek, and to knock. And the minute you take the initiative, you take the first step, he's there. Like the prodigal son, when you read the word in the book of Luke, chapter 15, the father was waiting for the son, but the father never went looking for him. The son had to take a conscious decision that understanding his situation, he had to repent of his sins, confess his sins, get the forgiveness of God, and only then he could come back. So the father was waiting, but the son in the pigsty had to take the initiative of wanting to go back. He confessed his sin. When you read Luke 15, you understand very clearly, he says, I have sinned against heaven and before you, Father. I am not worthy to be called your son, but make me at least one of your hired servants. So there was a confession, there was a repentance, a confession, and there was a coming back. So God is very clearly saying that you have to come back, come back to the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we continue with the same chapter of Isaiah 45. Verse 20 says, Assemble yourselves, and come, draw near together. You who have escaped from the nations, they have no knowledge, who carry the wood of their carved image and pray to a God that cannot save. Amen. Today, my dear brother, my sister, it is so sad to see that Jesus has redeemed you. Hallelujah. Has given you an escape from death of eternal damnation. If Jesus had not died at the cross at Calvary, I want to tell you one or two things. See, the word of God says in the book of Leviticus, chapter 17, verse 11, that life is in the blood, and the blood has been given to be poured out on the altar for the atonement of sins. We know when blood ebbs out from a body, the spirit leaves the body, and life ceases. So, since the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and Romans 6 23 says the wages of that sin is death and therefore you and I because we had fallen short of the glory of God by sinning our rightful wage or what you deserved was death but 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says he who knew no sin that is Jesus was made sin for us that you and I might become the righteousness, the life of Christ in him. So my sin was transferred to Jesus. Therefore, my death penalty was also transferred to Jesus. And therefore, it is Jesus who has saved me. We heard here earlier that the, the, the important word or the key word was God is to us a God of acts of salvation. And to God, the Lord belong escapes from death. So he has saved you from death. He has saved you from eternal damnation. And his name is Jesus Christ. This is not the name of any saint. And whether a woman or a man or whoever it is. No man, no woman, no saint, no holy person living here. No system, no religion, no rites, rituals, tradition. Nothing can save you except the Savior. That is why John the Baptist pointed out to him. John 1.29 Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. Matthew 1.21 says You shall call his name Jesus 
A child will be born. You shall call his name Jesus. He will save the people from their sins. So salvation is only in the name of Christ. That is why again, the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 12, very clearly tells us, without a shadow of doubt, my dear brother, my dear sister, that salvation is only in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. But many people, many intellectuals, many philosophers, many theologians, many church leaders, even now, do not proclaim this truth. They believe there is salvation for all. You lead a good life. But the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, You have been saved by grace through faith and it's not of your works. Acts 4.12 says, Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name other than the name of Jesus under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Salvation is only in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, it is so clear that you, Jesus died for us and he has saved us. So there is an escape from the nations and they have no, no, the nations, they are all, you know, it's a big group who is going to eternal damnation. And today many people say that the majority believe this so that they must be right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear brother, God is saying, assemble yourselves and come. Gather together and come. Come to me, he says. Hallelujah. Because I am your savior. No man, no one, nobody can save you other than me. He says, draw near together, draw near to me. God says very clearly, draw near to me and the devil will flee. Flee from you. Hallelujah. Then he says, you who have escaped from the nations, they have no knowledge. See, the nations are still treading a path of destruction. You have escaped from them. You have come out from them. Yet, many people still have little remnants of their old beliefs, doctrines. Like the people, God's people who came out from Egypt. While they were in the wilderness, they were looking back to Egypt. Like Lord's wife looked back to Sodom and Gomorrah. They were saying, why did you bring us here? I mean, there were good graves in Egypt where we could be buried. The leeks and the onions and the meat and the fish of Egypt, they were so much better. We don't have anything to eat here except this manna. And so they are so hard-hearted. That is why when you read the word in the book of Hebrews chapter 7, sorry, chapter 3, it very clearly says, do not be hard-hearted like the people in the rebellion. And what happened when you read the word in the book of Numbers? God was so angry with them. He said, no one above the age of 20 when they left Egypt, other than Caleb and Joshua, will ever enter the promised land. Because they were all hard-hearted, murmuring, rebelling against Moses. Hallelujah. So he says, draw near together. You who have escaped from the nations, they were under captivity, Babylon in captivity. Today you are under captivity of the world, of sin, of flesh, of Satan. And God has redeemed you by his grace. You have been saved by grace through faith. And he's saying, assemble together. And he says, they have no knowledge. Their minds are darkened. They are blind. Who carry the wood of their carved image and pray to a God that cannot save. Carry. Because when you read in many places in the scripture, they talk of a woodcutter going and cutting a tree. Then he cuts the tree into pieces. The tree is the original one. Then some of it he uses to cook food. Some of it he shapes into a god, an idol, and he worships. So it's the same wood. It is used, one is he has transformed that into a god and worships it. And the other he has used to cook his food and eat. This is the ignorance of the people. He says very clearly, who carry the wood of the carved image and pray to a God that cannot save. My dear brother, my dear sister, I want to ask you, have you ever bowed down? I mean, I mean that might be a wrong question. After having known Jesus, have you ever bowed down before an idol? That idol is not God. There are so many people today who transgress God's law blatantly 
And there are so many priests and men in authority who are promoting this because of some economic gain. Hallelujah. Today, my dear brother, my dear, we need to understand it is the greatest, it is, a, it is adultery, spiritual adultery to say that on the one hand that you are the bride of Christ, you are the betrothed of Christ and on the other hand go and worship an idol, worship a saint, whether it's a man or a woman, worship an animal or worship anything else. It is the greatest dishonor that you can give God. It is the greatest robbing of God. Because the book of Malachi chapter 3 says, us, will man rob God? He is not talking, I mean the word of God is not talking only of tithe. Tithe is the least in the mind of God. Are you robbing God of his glory that rightly belongs to God? Because God says, I will not share my glory with anyone because I am a jealous God. Are you with me? He is jealous for your affection. He is jealous for your love. Are you with me? Not anything else. He is not jealous of the person you are bowing down to. No. He is jealous for you because he wants you. He is possessive about you. Because his blood was shed for you, my dear brother. And you go and bow down before an idol. You burn candles before an idol. You pray to an idol or a woman or a man. You signifying that. A saint or a saintess or whatever you call it. Hallelujah. I think there is only one gender for the saint. Saint's own. Yeah, saint. Is unisex. Hallelujah. You are bowing down before an idol. And people might teach you. That is okay. It is not okay. It is the greatest of sins. Idolatry. Hallelujah. God hates idolatry. Hallelujah. Let's read one or two verses. There is a separation that takes place. Who separates you? It's the word of God that separates you, my dear brother, my sister. You and I can be separated from Christ only by the word of God. Because the book of Romans chapter 8 says, I mean, sorry, the book of, I'll cut you now. Because the word of God in the book of John chapter 8 says, if you abide in my word, you are indeed my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Truth is the word of God. So the separation, the sanctification is only from the word of God. The book of John chapter 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them by your truth. Separate them by your truth. My word is truth. The word of God is truth. Jesus is truth. My dear brother, my dear sister, I urge you to hold on to truth and not to deception, not to lies. The devil is a father of lies. If there is anything contrary to God's word, it is a lie. And the source of that lie is the devil, the antichrist, the Satan. So if anyone is following that, he is having the spirit of the Antichrist. God says, it will come. It will come. The Antichrist will come. He's already here in the spirit. And one day he will manifest himself. Hallelujah. So there has to be a coming out. Without a coming out, without a separation, you cannot worship God. When you read the word in the book of Exodus, very clearly, Pharaoh finally allowed Moses to say, okay, you worship Worship your God here in Egypt. Where, uh, Moses said, no, we have to go into the desert. Three days journey. We, our people and our cattle, everything had to go. Three days journey and then we worship. Because we have to be away from you. We have to be cut off from you. From this contagious, from this stagnation, we have to be cut off. Hallelujah, my dear brother, my dear sister, don't you want to worship God? You cannot worship God being in the world. You have to separate yourself from the world. I don't mean you have to die a physical death to the world. No. I mean your reliance upon, your trust, your worship, your adoration of the world, the rely, all those things have to change. Your reliance must be upon God himself, Jesus Christ. Your inheritance must be the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why when you read the word in the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 1, God called Abraham. He just did not call Abraham, but he told him that if you want to come to me, you have to do some things. The way of answering my call is by doing something. And God says in the book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 1, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country. Get out. 
He never said, please, why don't you? He gave a command, get out of your country. Then again, I will repeat it, I paraphrase it, if it should be repeated like that, get out from your family. Then it says, and get out from your father's house. So the country, the family, and the father's house. Today, these are the things which are greatest bondage. Country, you can relate it to the world. Are you with me? The family can relate to relationships. And your father's house is sometimes the people who are dear to you. Some people don't accept Jesus because the husband or the wife is not accepting Jesus. My dear brother, at least in your heart, accept him. Are you with me? Are you with me? I am not even making any judgment or anything. But at least in your heart, give your heart to Jesus. There might be some limitations. I am not even going to suggest anything. You pray to God, he will show you the way. But you have to get out of your country. That is the physical world. Reliance upon that. Get out of the family, the relationships. Today, people reject Jesus because they are afraid of the family, their friends, their relatives, the system. He says, get out of that. Only then you will be able to follow Jesus into the desert. Are you with me? Away from Egypt. Away from the world. Hallelujah. Then again, God says very clearly, you have to get out. Unless you get out, you cannot get in. Are you with me? Unless you, I mean, God's people had to get out of Egypt to get into the promised land. Can they say, okay, we want the promised land, but we are going to stay in Egypt? No. So if you want to enter the rest that the Lord has promised you, you have to get out of the world. I'm again saying, I'm not talking about a physical death, but a mental death. Because there should be a renewing of your mind. The book of Romans very clearly says, chapter 12, do not be conformed to the world, but by a renewal of your mind, be transformed. Your benchmarks must change. Everything, your reliance, everything must change. Only then, you will be able to follow God, the Lord as Abraham did. Then what did he say? He says, I never asked you to get out, to be stranded somewhere. I called you out to bring you in somewhere. Then God says in Genesis chapter 12 verse 2, I will make you a great nation. I want to bless you. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Hallelujah. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So he is bringing you out to take you in to a land of blessings. He will bless you and you will be a blessing for the people. My dear brother, my dear sister, don't you want the blessing of God? Or you want the blessing of, any, of a man? Or a system? Or a saint at the most? My dear brother, my dear sister, I am telling you, you do not know the relationship that person had with God. You do not know his destiny. Are you comparing him to God? Because we heard earlier in another episode, the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, he says, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, for he always lives to make intercession for them. He is able to save you to the uttermost. Do you need a savior beyond Jesus? Do you want a man or a woman or an animal as a savior to you beyond the ability that Jesus has? Do you want someone to be your mediator between God and man? The book of Timothy says there is no other mediator between God and man except the man Jesus Christ. Why do you disobey God's word? Blatant, blatantly, you know, with the, with the vengeance you are disobeying God's word. See, unless you get out, you will not be able to get in. That is why the book of Hosea, this is spiritual adultery. If you are worshipping a saint, or a woman, or a man, or a woman, or any carved image of anything, of a woman or anybody, you are committing adultery. That is why the book of Hosea 5.4 4, 4, sorry, 5, 4 says, let's read that. Yeah, that's why the book of Hosea chapter 5 verse 4 says, They do not direct their deeds toward turning to their God, for the spirit of harlotry is in their midst, and they do not know the Lord. Harlotry. That is why 
in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 4, God says, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? If you have friendship with the world, God calls you an adulterer and adulteresses because you are giving the glory which belongs to God to the world, worldly system. Again, what happens because of that adultery? Hosea 4, 6 says, Hallelujah, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being a priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. God is cutting you off because of your idol worship, because you are bowing down to a saint, you are praying to a saint, you are burning candles to a saint, you are putting garlands to a saint, you are observing a novena for, to a saint. You are putting arms for a saint. My dear brother, arms, that is the economy of that. All the saints are promoted for money by the church. Are you with me? Hallelujah. I heard about one priest who came out by the grace of God. You know, the bishop makes a routine visit of the parishes. And his first question to the priests there, they have these small shrines all over within his jurisdiction. So when he comes, he asks, what is the collection? What is the collection? Are you with me? Money, mammon. So who is that priest and who is that bishop serving? God says you cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is the world. Mammon is Satan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to understand today what the church needs is a spirit of wisdom and of revelation of the knowledge of Jesus. Ephesians 1.17 says that very clearly. You need a spirit of wisdom and understanding. A spirit of revelation of Jesus. And when Jesus comes into your life, hallelujah, the darkness will dispel. The light of the glory of the gospel of Christ who is the image of God himself will dispel the darkness that Satan has put into your mind. Hallelujah. Again, I just want to read one more word to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. Idolatry, which belongs to Satan. Listen to this, my dear brother. It says, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. And I will receive you. I will be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters. Says the Lord Almighty. My dear brother, my dear sister. This does not require any explanation. Come out from the religious system. The worldly system. Come out from the saint system. Come out from the novena system. Come out from the arm system. Come out from everything that is of religion. And then only you will be able to see God. That is why he says, Come out from them, among them, and separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. And then I will receive you. And when I receive you, I will be a father to you. And when I receive you, I will see you as my sons and daughters. Amen. What a great privilege. You want to cling on to the world, or you want to cling on to Jesus? Take your decision. Make a choice, my dear brother, my dear sister. Hallelujah. I just want to conclude with one more word of God, which God prohibits idolatry. God prohibits the making of any image of a saint or anything. My dear brother, my sister, this is to be obeyed. God's word is to be obeyed. God says very clearly in the book of Ezekiel, I will take out the heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will deposit my spirit in you so that you will walk in my statutes and you will obey my judgments. So if any person is not obeying these words of God, then you have a heart of stone. You do not have the Holy Spirit. You have the evil spirit. You are a son and a daughter of the devil. Hallelujah. I am telling you this truth. Let's read the word in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 15 onwards. I am just going to read it out to you. 
and then end this episode. I am not going to give any explanation because I believe that you are a person of sound mind. You are a person who understands. You are a person who can reason. Do not be a pawn in the hand of the religious people. Do not be a pawn in the hand of people who twist God's word. Hallelujah. Who will take you to eternal damnation because of disobedience. Because God's word says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you do not keep God's commandments, then you are actually hating God. You are a wicked person. Are you with me? Listen to this. Take careful heed. This is Deuteronomy 4.15. Please note it down. Deuteronomy 4.15 onwards. Take careful heed to yourselves, for you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, or the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the air, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, or the likeness of any fish that is in the water beneath the earth. And take heed lest you lift your eyes to heaven and when you see the sun, the moon and the stars, all the hosts of heaven, you feel driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord your God has given to all the peoples under the whole heaven as a heritage. Are you with me? The most important thing I need to emphasize here is do not, hallelujah, lest you act corruptly and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of any male or female. My dear brother, my sister, in the place that you go to worship, do you find any form, any statue of in the form of a male or a female? Is it a contradiction to God's word? Are you not hating God? And if you hate God, how do you expect to spend eternity with God? You will be hating God because you love the devil. And you will be spending eternity with the love person you love, that is the devil. Where they will be weeping, gnashing of teeth. I am telling you this to wash, warn you, to caution you, my dear brother, my dear. Get out of idolatry today. Because our God is a God of salvation. He died for you. Don't you even recognize that. Don't be an idolater. Don't be an idol worshipper. Worship the true God. He is spirit. He wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. It is such people that the Father is seeking. Read John 4, 20 onwards. You will find that. Amen, amen, amen.